Farmers in China's Xinjiang province are turning a desert into a thriving farmland. Alaskan salmon, $82 per pound in Tokyo. Desert raisins sold in China's Xinjiang, $6 per pound and fresher. This shouldn't exist. The Xinjiang desert hits 158 feff in summer, hot enough to fry meat on rocks. Four inches of rain annually. Soil so saturated with salt, it crystallizes on the surface like snow. For eight centuries, nothing survived here except scorpions. Meanwhile, our oceans are collapsing. Nine bits of fish populations vanished since 1950. Total extinction predicted by 2048. Three billion people facing starvation. Then China did something the world's marine biologists called ecological suicide. They flew millions of salmon, grouper, and ocean species into the scorching wasteland, 2,500 kilometers from the near sea. Western experts mocked this desert delusion. Agricultural scientists calculated a billion dollar failure. Instead, what emerged from those salt poison sands would revolutionize how humanity feeds itself. And the farmers who made it possible will leave you questioning everything you believed about survival. The farmers who revolutionized survival weren't agricultural scientists or marine biologists. They were descendants of failure, inheritors of eight centuries of agricultural defeat who discovered something in their cursed land that Harvard researchers had completely overlooked. Xinjiang's 1.6 million square kilometers challenge every agricultural principle. Li Wei runs his weathered hands through water that now teems with life. The same ground where his grandfather's wheat withered for 40 consecutive years. Four generations of my family broke themselves against this land, he says, watching salmon fingerlings dart through what was once barren salt flat. When Beijing announced we'd raise ocean fish here, 2,500 kilometers from any sea, I laughed until I cried. Then I realized they were serious. Marine biologists from 12 countries reviewed the 2022 proposal. Their assessment was unanimous. Ecological impossibility. International aquaculture consultants calculated 94% failure probability. Yet hidden beneath Xinjiang's desolation lay 3 million hectares of glacier-fed water bodies, an aquatic treasure invisible to satellites unknown to outsiders. You learn to read this desert differently after 30 years, Lee explains, testing water temperature with practiced precision. My grandfather saw only salt and death, but we discovered these waters flow at constant 12 degrees year round, with dissolved oxygen levels matching Norway's fjords. The desert was keeping secrets, but transforming this discovery into the world's most unlikely aquaculture revolution would require something more audacious than anyone imagined. When the planes departed from coastal provinces in the summer of 2023, their cargo holds carried what many considered an ecological gamble worth 30 million yuan. On board were 30,000 crab seedlings, 12,000 pearl grouper fry and 2,000 cold water salmon hatchlings, all destined for a landlocked region where ground temperatures can reach 70 degrees Celsius. What happens next will show you why farmers call this the most stressful week of the year. Zhang Mei, who manages operations at the Errol City Cooperative, remembers those first deliveries. You have exactly six hours from landing to get these fish into properly calibrated water. Six hours. The temperature has to be within one degree, the salinity perfect to 0.1%, or you lose everything. We had teams working around the clock, testing water every 15 minutes. One mistake costs 500,000 yuan. This wasn't just about transferring species. It was about reshaping entire ecosystems and the livelihoods of 10,000 farming families. The logistical coordination was staggering, involving military precision planning across 17 airports and a vast network of refrigerated transportation maintaining exact five degrees of sea temperatures. But timing this process perfectly requires something most people never consider, the hidden treasure beneath Xinjiang's surface. Over three million hectares of lakes, rivers, and reservoirs dot the landscape, fed by glacial meltwater from the Tian Mountains. This water, 
flowing at a constant 12 degrees year round with dissolved oxygen levels of 810 mallet allers creates perfect conditions for cold water species. The reservoirs of Nilka County, nestled in the Ili Kazakh Autonomous Prefecture, became ground zero for this revolution. Here floating cages of varying sizes, some as large as football fields, were positioned with GPS precision across the water. Each cage held salmon at different growth stages, monitored by sensors transmitting data every 30 seconds. The pressure of this decision weighs heavily, especially when you understand what comes next. Which region are you watching this video from? Drop your location in the comments below. We'd love to know where our Tech Motion community is tuning in from today. In Tumshuk City, where soil salinity reaches 3% and nothing has grown for centuries, farmers have achieved what marine biologists said was impossible. This level of precision might seem excessive until you see what happens when farmers get it wrong. Wang Jun, who oversees the greenhouse nurseries, explains the delicate balance. We're essentially creating an ocean in the middle of a desert. Every morning at 4 a.m., I'm testing salinity levels, adjusting trace minerals. You get the magnesium to calcium ratio wrong by even 2%, and you'll see fish dying within hours. After 25 years, you learn to read the water like your grandfather read the weather. The process begins in controlled greenhouse environments where saltwater fry are raised through winter at precisely 28 degrees. These young fish, bred in tanks with salinity, gradually adjusted from 0.5% to 2.8% over 14 days, undergo a transformation that mimics millions of years of evolution in just weeks. As spring arrives and temperatures stabilize above 15 degrees C, these fry are transported to saline ponds, where their environment has been meticulously engineered with 17 different trace elements and specialized probiotics. This innovation marks a complete departure from traditional aquaculture. Instead of relying on ocean proximity, Xinjiang has created its own marine ecosystem. Here's where 20 years of experience becomes crucial. The automated systems controlling these environments process 50,000 data points daily. But it's the farmers who make the critical decisions. Machines tell you the numbers, Wang notes, but they can't tell you when a slight color change in the water means storm pressures affecting oxygen levels, or when fish behavior suggests trace mineral imbalances the sensors haven't detected yet. But even with all this preparation, the most demanding challenge still lies ahead. These aren't the traditional labor-intensive farms where your grandfather might have worked. This is precision aquaculture, where every aspect is controlled by algorithms processing data from 2,000 sensors per facility. The remarkable thing about this operation becomes apparent when you understand the scale. Each pond is monitored continuously for pH, maintained at 7.8, 8.2, dissolved oxygen, ammonia levels, and 14 other parameters. Environmental data feeds into a central hub where AI systems adjust conditions in real time, making micro-corrections every 90 seconds. Liu Hong, chief technician at the processing center, oversees operations that handle 50 tons of salmon daily. At 3 a.m., when most people are sleeping, we're already preparing for harvest. The fish have to be processed within 20 minutes of leaving water, packed in ice within 40 minutes, and loaded for shipment within two hours. This isn't just work. It's a choreographed dance where every second determines whether families in Beijing eat premium sashimi or average fish. The ice boxes storing freshly harvested fish maintain temperatures at exactly 0.5 degrees through digital systems that adjust every 12 seconds. But here's what separates Xinjiang from coastal fisheries. Zero environmental contamination. No microplastics, no heavy metals, no industrial pollutants, just pure glacial water and carefully controlled conditions. What most people don't realize about this precision is how it's revolutionizing sustainability. Rising ocean temperatures have forced 4% of a traditional fisheries to close, while overfishing threatens complete ecosystem collapse by 2048, according to UN projections. Xinjiang's desert farms, operating with 90% less water than traditional aquaculture and zero ocean impact, represent a complete paradigm shift. The real test of the system's success, however, comes from an unexpected source. 
at the Jiudaigu Aquaculture Cooperative, where the Taklamakan Desert meets innovation, a question divides experts. Should desert regions prioritize food production over water conservation when both represent survival? Ma Chunhua, the cooperative's founder, recalls the early days. In 2017, we had four members and everyone said we were crazy. The desert sand would blow into our ponds. Alkaline soil poisoned the water. Summer heat killed everything. My husband said, I was throwing away our life savings. But after 30 years farming this land, I knew something others didn't. This desert wants to give life. We just weren't listening properly. Her revolutionary dual farming system pairs crayfish with water caltrop, creating a symbiotic relationship that produces 150 kilograms of premium crayfish per mew, triple the national average. Each cooperative member now earns an additional 50,000 yuan, annually, transforming subsistence farmers into agricultural innovators. But what really separates this operation from others is something you'd never expect, the emotional investment. Every morning I walk these ponds like my father walked his wheat fields, Ma explains. You can hear when crayfish are healthy. It's a subtle clicking sound. When that sound changes, something's wrong. No sensor can teach you that. It takes years of listening, of caring for these creatures like they're feeding your own family because they are. The cooperative, which started with four individuals, has expanded to 100 members as success stories spread throughout the region. Yet the journey from harvest to market reveals an even more remarkable transformation. In the world of premium seafood, 24 hours can mean the difference between $40 per kilogram salmon and fish worth nothing. From Kalasu Township's glacier-fed reservoirs, where water purity exceeds drinking standards, Xinjiang salmon begin a journey that redefines fresh. Here's where the operation becomes almost unbelievable. At 4 a.m., automated harvesting begins. By 4.20 a.m., fish are processed and packed. By 5 a.m., they're loaded onto refrigerated trucks maintaining 0.8 deg C. By 8 a.m., they're on planes. By 2 p.m., they're in restaurants in Shanghai, 4,000 kilometers away. This salmon is fresher than most coastal fish sold in seaside markets. Chen Wei, who manages cold chain logistics, describes the pressure. We're not just moving fish, we're racing against biology. Every hour after harvest, quality drops 5%. After 20 years doing this, I still feel that weight. These aren't just products, they represent months of work by dozens of families. When I see our salmon on five-star restaurant menus, I think about the farmers who check water temperatures on minus 30 degree mornings. Digital platforms and real-time order management have revolutionized distribution. In 2023, Xinjiang's online seafood sales reached 395 million yuan, a 106% increase from the previous years. Desert-raised fish, once considered impossible, now command premium prices from China's most discerning chefs. The implications of this success extend far beyond profit margins. If you found this video fascinating and worth watching, comment one below. If not, be honest, comment too. A single year of relentless innovation brought outcomes that shattered every projection. The arrival of 12,000 pearl grouper seedlings, each worth 50 yuan, marked a critical milestone. These fish, raised in precisely engineered ecosystems, are projected to yield 6.2 tons, commanding 150 yuan per kilogram, a market value exceeding most traditional crops by 500%. What's truly shocking is the scale achieved so quickly. Annual salmon production neared 7 million tons, generating 30 million yuan in revenue. More than a hundred different fish species now thrive in Xinjiang's controlled environments, contributing to both food security and ecological diversity. Zhou Ming, senior aquaculture specialist, reflects on the transformation. I've spent 40 years in this industry, studied at three international institutes. What we're achieving here breaks every rule I learned. We're growing tropical fish in a desert, marine species, 2,500 kilometers from any ocean, premium salmon, where summer ground temperature hits 70 degrees. This isn't just farming, it's rewriting what's possible. The success extends beyond individual farms. 
Entire communities previously dependent on seasonal agriculture now have year-round income. Youth who left for cities are returning, bringing digital expertise to traditional farming families. But perhaps the most profound impact is yet to come. With ocean fish stocks declining 90% since 1950 and coastal aquaculture threatened by rising seas, Xinjiang's success isn't just remarkable, it's essential for human survival. This vast arid region has demonstrated that innovation driven by necessity can reshape global food production. The science behind this transformation will astound you. By harnessing glacier-fed reservoirs, converting saline wastelands, and creating ecosystems mimicking oceanic conditions, Xinjiang has shattered agricultural boundaries. Environmental sensors, automated systems, and meticulous breeding techniques have pushed beyond what scientists thought possible. Dr. James Mitchell from the International Aquaculture Institute visited Xinjiang in 2024. What I witnessed challenged 40 years of marine biology training. They're not just growing fish in the desert. They're doing it more efficiently than most coastal operations. Zero pollution, 90 pot and less water usage, controlled conditions eliminating disease. This is the future. For regions facing water scarcity, rising temperatures, and food insecurity, Xinjiang provides a blueprint. If you can grow premium seafood in one of Earth's harshest environments, what other impossibilities can become reality? In China's blazing desert, where centuries of farmers failed, we witnessed the impossible. Oceans created from wasteland, salmon thriving where only death existed. This isn't about fish or technology. It's about humanity's greatest truth. When survival demands innovation, we shatter every limitation. These farmers who monitor water at 3 a.m. in freezing darkness, who transform salt-poisoned soil into abundance, they prove that necessity 